Today I'm going to cover 4 techniques that JPEG Mafia uses in his beats. JPEG Mafia is one of the most forward-thinking artists in hip-hop today. He is someone who I have a lot of respect for, especially with how daring a lot of his music is. And there is only one JPEG Mafia, and this isn't a video on how to sound exactly like him. Rather, this is just to show some of the unique production techniques that he uses in his beats. By the way, if you enjoy my videos, think about subscribing. If you ever get tired of my videos, it's really easy to unsubscribe. It really does help me out though. So starting off with tip number one, we have the idea of unique percussion. For many of us, we can at times too quickly reach for a basic hi-hat and paint in a simple little pattern like a note on every 8th or 16th step and just call it a day. Something that JPEG Mafia does with his beats is that he doesn't take these elements for granted. He figures out ways to make his percussive elements in his beats more interesting. So for example, in this beat here, instead of using a straightforward hi-hat with a straightforward pattern, you can hear what's happening. And if I just isolate the percussive sounds, you can hear we have an array of different unique sounds and textures that have their own unique rhythms. In many of his beats, JPEG Mafia will include these small little glitches and distortion sounds like I have here. And he uses them to act as a unique percussive texture within his beat to go along with some of the more straightforward sounds like rims and side sticks. But even with the more straightforward sounds, he doesn't program them in a way that's straightforward. He will push these sounds to have a unique rhythm like I have here. You can see these aren't perfectly on grid. They have a swaying and an unquantized feel to them, nor are they just on every 8th or 16th step. By the way, if you're wondering how I got these percussive sounds all on one piano roll, I'd recommend checking out the video that's right above my head where I cover a better way to make drum patterns in FL Studio. So this is definitely something that I would recommend to people. We all have those sounds in our beats and those techniques we all take for granted and just go into autopilot when we use them in very typical ways. But at times doing things atypically can really help you push your music in more unique ways. This is something that I talked about in my video covering Mad Lib's production techniques right above my head as well. Tip number two has to do with juxtaposition. Something that I picked up on is JPEG Mafia's marrying of very smooth, lush sounds with very aggressive, abrasive sounds in some of his beats. So for example, with this beat here, the musical components sound very smooth and loungy, something that you'd expect to hear in a more laid back type of beat. <laughs> But if I were to isolate all the other sounds in this beat, they sound like the opposite. They're very abrasive and distorted and very aggressive sounding. Just like we've covered already, there are just a lot of these glitchy percussive sounds as well as the distortion noises coming in and out of the beats. As well, we have this big, colorful, boomy bass tone. Typically, if you lay down this type of smooth musical instrumentation, you might think to go down the road of adding a nice clean bass line with some nice smooth ride cymbals for percussion, and you'd end up with an overall smooth beat. But here we have different styles and sounds intersecting to create something that's very boundary pushing. So even in my own videos, when I cover tips related to making boom bat beats, or lo-fi for example and I walk you guys through some of the more typical common styles of these beats and how to make them. Taking some of the elements from those styles and swapping out some of the ideas and going left when you should be going right can be an interesting way to make your beats stand out and more unique. Speaking of textures though there is something very interesting that I noticed with a lot of JPEG Mafia's basses. When it comes to bass tones, we might think of them as being either very subby and transparent or very distorted and aggressive. With many of JPEG Mafia's basses, I notice that they're somewhat in the middle. They feel very large and upfront, but still manage to provide plenty of space. So we can hear in this section of the beat with a more full bass line. There are a few things that I did to get this bass to sound the way that it does. 
For one, something that I feel is somewhat common in JPEG Mafia's beats is that his bases have a lot of stereo presence to them. Traditionally, you might take your bases and have them sit right in the middle in mono, and this is gonna be a good idea a lot of the time, mostly to focus those lower frequencies. But what JPEG Mafia will do at times though, is it sounds like he'll take those mid and high frequencies of his bases and give those a lot of stereo presence. So what I did with this bass was I used Maximus in order to control the middle and high frequencies and separate them from the low frequencies and then I created some width separation with this knob right here. You can see the mid as well as the high has a decent amount of stereo separation, but the low is completely merged and in mono. You can hear the difference between this bass being completely mono and it having stereo presence. If I go to the master here, A lot of his beats, he just has a rich stereo presence with his bass. Another thing that really helped me achieve this type of texture was that I did not go full out with extremely aggressive distortion. Rather, what I did was I used some very light saturation and I used it in a very specific frequency range. The tool that I used to do this was this one here called Hallison. By no means am I saying that this is the tool that JPEG Mafia uses exactly. But what this allowed me to do was pick a very narrow window that I wanted to add some color onto and start to boost it up. You can hear what a difference this makes. That's how I was able to get that very rich low mid feeling in this bass. And this is one of the tools that I like to use whenever I want to add some color onto my bass, but do so in a non-intrusive way, like maybe Fruity Wave Shaper or Fast Distortion would. If you want a full walkthrough on why adding distortion and saturation to your basses can help your beats sound better, check the video out right above my head. And finally, the last tip that I want to cover is a small detail, but it's a really helpful one to help with this aesthetic, and it has to do with noise. This is a concept that you might be used to if you make lo-fi, for example, using some kind of static or tape noise can be a very helpful tool when trying to fill up space. Something that I noticed in a lot of JPEG Mafia's beats though, is that he'll use really unique types of noises to fill up space in his beats, and at times multiple types of noises as well. A great example of this in an actual beat of his that you can easily hear is what's cracking. In this beat here, instead of using something like static, I use this noise here of a machine being turned on. As well, I use a lot of bit crushing on my sounds and that's how we got that additional layer of noise also in the beat. So you can hear what a difference that makes. And finally, during the hook, I used yet another weird noise sound. This is something that JPEG Mafia does in his beats from time to time as well. When building the different sections of your beats, you might think to grab some more instrumentation and build some more musical layers, but instead of throwing in some random noise like this one here. And having it go in and out throughout your beat is something that you can think of doing. It can help create the impression of largeness in your beat. An example of him doing this in one of his beats is Free the Frail. So those are four JPEG Mafia production tips that you can use in your own beats. If you guys have enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. Head over to betterbeatmaker.com if you want to join my full online beat making course. A link to my free drum kits available in the description box below, as well as a link to the Discord if you want to join my producer community. And I'll see you guys next time.